Good Wednesday evening. We want to welcome you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, we want to take time always to invite you to come and be with us in any or all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11. Sunday night services at 6 p.m. Wednesday night services at 7 p.m. We're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. We also have an FM transmitter for those that are too sick to come inside or disabled to where they can't come inside. All they got to do is come to the church parking lot during our service times, tune the radio to 92.9 FM, and they'll be able to hear what's going on inside while the services are going on. If you'd ever like to correspond by mail, you could send that to 275 Toast Road, Mount Airy, North Carolina, 27030. Thank you again so much for viewing this Wednesday evening or whenever it is you're viewing. We thank you so much for that, and we trust that uh, the Lord would help you today. I'm trusting that the Lord will help me today, and I'm glad, thank God, that he is well able to do that. We want to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And uh, I hope and pray that you'll pray with us and pray for us. Father, thank you so much today for the privilege to pray. And, and Lord, I just want to thank you for saving me, Lord. I pray you'd bless this video this evening, that it would be a comfort and a help to all that view it, whenever they view it, Lord. I pray you'd deal with the hearts of those that don't know Christ as their Savior, that they'd be saved, and those that's backslid, that they'd get back in fellowship with you, Lord, confess their sin. You said you'd be faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Father, I pray for my uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray for more churches without pastors, God. We've got several we're praying that you'll help, Lord. Help them to find the man of God that they need to lead them in the, lead them in the word of God as they need to. And Lord, I pray for the many that are sick in body on our church prayer list and others. These that's had death in their families, that you comfort them. We pray for all of our missionaries, God, that you'd bless them in a great, great way. We pray for the Brent Rochester family, God, that you continue to bless them with the Brent, Sister Francie, and Isaac, and Angela, and Kidron, and Micah, that you bless them in a great way. Thank you, God, for being so good to us. and Help us right now that we might ever do your will. Forgive us of our sin, our faults, our failures, our shortcomings. Help us as we sing these songs and as we look in the word of God. And thank you for every viewer. In Jesus' precious name we pray and ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll tell you where to turn here in the Word of God in just a little bit. But we want to do an old song here out of the hymn book, page number 305. A very, very familiar song called The Old Rugged Cross. Let's do this one today. And I hope this will be a blessing to you this evening. Sing along if you'd like. The Old Rugged Cross. Think about what it says. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and Someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross, Jesus. 
Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever shame and reproach glad to bear and you will call me someday to my home far away where is glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen to that. Great old hymn, the old rugged cross. I hope that was a blessing to you today. We'll do another one, Lord willing, here in just a little bit. Be taking that good old authorized King James Bible and turning with us to the book of Acts, chapter number 17. Acts chapter number 17, we'll be down around verse number, uh, around verse number 22. Acts chapter 17, verse number 22. And uh, while you're turning, if you are to where you can, uh, we'll make just a few announcements. Pray for our service tonight, this our Wednesday evening service tonight at the church at 7 p.m. And uh, of course, you may be viewing another day, but uh, anyway, pray for that service and then also, let me mention this, our revival service is coming up here at the church on November the 18th through the 20th. November the 18th through the 20th, 7 p.m. each night, Brother Darrell Cox will be with us preaching. He pastors the Trinity Baptist Church in Moxville, North Carolina, and uh, we're looking forward to Brother Darrell being with us, so keep that in mind. We'll have special singing each night, try to have all that lined up, working on it, And uh, but I hope and pray that you'll Pray for that meeting, and if you can come, if you're driving distance, come. We'd love to have you come be with us as well. And uh, people have asked us from time to time about live streaming. We never have done that. We have these videos on uh, Sunday mornings at, uh, what is it? I've done forgot now, 8.30, but, uh, and then Wednesday nights at 7. But uh, we've never live streamed services. We might could possibly get that worked out. I'm not sure. But uh, just our situation just will be, be a little bit tough to do that. But anyway, come if you can. If you can't come, pray. And I guess that's all the announcements that I need to make right now as far as I know. And uh, we just trust that, uh, hey, this will be a blessing to you this evening. Well, I hope you found your place there in the Word of God. We're going to look in the Word of God in Acts chapter 17 about verse number 22 here in just a minute. I'm going to sing you a song. I think I sung this a while back, but... Uh, I want, want to sing it again today, and it's called, Why Did I Wait So Long? And everybody I've ever talked to that's saved says, boy, I wish I'd have got saved sooner than I did, and I'm, I'm one of them, and uh, boy, the Lord's been good. This song was written from the perspective of a man that has just got saved, and he's thinking about that. Why did I wait so long? And I hope it'll be a help to you this, this evening. <laughs> we'll try to do this. We'll try to remember the words to it. Why did I wait so long? Pray for us. God spoke to me a hundred times. He called my name. I would not go. Now I'll cry with joy on bended knees. Could have been this happy long ago. Why did I wait so long? God's been 
with me through troubled times with hands not seen he's got in my way but my foolish pride and worldly things kept me from him until today why did I wait so long why did I wait so long to answer the call from the greatest of I'm glad, thank God, I got in when I did, but I'd love to have got saved a whole lot quicker. Amen. And I believe everybody probably would say that. Let me lay this guitar down. We're going to look in the Word of God, the book of Acts, chapter number 17. Acts, chapter number 17. And uh, I want to go to the Lord in the Word of Prayer. Father, thank you so much today for the privilege to pray again. Help us right now as we look at your Word. Pray you speak to my heart, speak to others' hearts. Help us, God, to do what you'd have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I tell you what. Whatever it is you're interested in the most, you're going you're gonna to try your best to make time for it, aren't you? Amen. That's just, that's just a fact of the matter. Somebody told me this past Wednesday night, and I ain't bragging on me one bit when I say what I'm getting ready to say. But somebody told me this past Wednesday night on the way out the door when they were leaving, this is what they said. I don't see how in the world people don't come to Wednesday night service. He said, man, I get so, so much help on Wednesday night, Wednesday night services. I get so much help. Talking about from the word of God and God speaking and dealing. I said, amen, brother. I said, I, I don't understand it either. Man, I, I want to be here. God put a want to in my heart. Thank God it's still there. And uh, I'm just glad to be able to be in any service for the Lord. What a blessing that it is. Acts chapter number 17, verse number 22. Paul is at Athens and uh, he is waiting on some to come to him, Silas and Timotheus to come. And while he's there, he sees the whole city given over to idolatry. Let me ask you this. What or who, what or who are you worshiping? Amen. If it's not the Lord Jesus Christ, it's an idol. The Bible says his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry, verse number 16. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons in the market daily with them that met with him, verse 18. Then certain of the philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others said, said he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached on them Jesus and the resurrection. Thank God for that message, amen. And they took him and brought him unto Aragopas, saying, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bring a certain strange things to our ears, and we would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Hey, I know some folks like that today. Amen. All they do is spend their time trying to tell something or hear something. And I'm talking about gossip is what I'm talking about. Verse 22, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. Here we have a record of Paul's message on Mars Hill here in Acts chapter number 17, verse number 22. And let's look at what he told that idol worshiping crowd. Verse number 22, then Paul, let me say something about idols. It don't always have to be a, a figure of something on a mantle or on an end table or on a coffee table or a counter. It can be a thing 
People make idols out of things. People make idols out of people. Hey, if it comes between me and God, it's become an idol to me, and I need to get that thing out. Amen. I need to get it out of my life. Sometimes family can be an idol to you. Amen. Things, people, famous, you might say, people might be an idol to you, but I'll tell you something, they'll all disappoint. They'll all disappoint. But thank God there's one that will never disappoint, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And boy, I want to get closer to him. I want to get close. Somebody said, I want to get closer and closer. Amen. I want to get closer and closer to him. Well, let's look at this message here in Acts 17, verse number 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, here's what he said, ye men of Athens, he addresses who he's speaking to. Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. I perceive something. I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Why? Because they worshiped false gods and there were false gods set up everywhere for them people to worship. He said, he said I perceive you're too superstitious. You know anybody that's superstitious? I know people that are still superstitious. Amen. Got all kinds of little old superstitions that they've heard of and grown up with and somebody's told them about. You know, uh, if a black cat crosses the road uh, in front of you, it's bad luck. Well, I tell you what, if I can't get stopped, it's bad luck for the cat. Amen. But it's not bad luck. if a, Hey, Friday the 13th is a superstition. People say, oh, I, I, can't, I, can't, uh, I can't go anywhere on Friday the 13th. I want to tell you something. Listen, Friday the 13th ain't no difference than Thursday the 12th. That's just superstition. Somebody, somebody said the other day, I don't believe in luck for the Christian, but somebody said the other day, they said, uh, my lucky number's 13. You know what? I, I, I thought, man, I like it. Most everybody's scared to death of that number. You know, in racing, I don't know about car racing, but in motorcycle racing, I, I follow motocross and supercross. Uh, the national numbers that you can earn by how many points you make, you know, you can earn a national number. It might be in the top 10. It might be in the top 20. You know, they do not give out the number 13 to anybody. They won't give that number out to anybody. Say, why? Because of superstition. Because of superstition. He said, you men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by, listen to what he says to them. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I passed by while you were holding your devotions, he said, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, to the unknown God. And here's what Paul said. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare unto, unto you. Him declare unto you. I'm going to tell you about him, that unknown God. I'm going to tell you about him. This is what he said in verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein. Listen, no need for all these different false gods for every little old thing that come up. He said, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, Paul said, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. As he was preaching this, there were, there were temples all around where he was at. He said, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though, as though he needed anything. He's not like an idol. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. This unknown God that you ignorantly worship. Notice that. He said, uh, I'm going to tell you about him. Amen. He's made all things. Amen. And uh, I like that. He giveth life and breath. And all things, to all, he said in verse number 25. Verse 26, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Thank God he knows it all, amen. And verse 27 says that, that they should seek the Lord. People need to seek the Lord, he said. Not these false gods, not these idols. Somebody said one time years ago, I don't if if something happened to my 
Talk about some of their loved ones. If something happened to some of my loved ones, I don't know if I'd have anything to live for. I thought to myself, you're saved, aren't you? I believe we'd have God to live for, amen. We'd have God to live for. We, a Christian should never make a statement like that. Well, if something happened to so-and-so, I don't know if I'd have reason to go on. Listen, I've got reason to go on because of the Lord, amen. And listen, I love my loved ones. I love my friends but I don't have an excuse to quit on God. I, I can't do that. He says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him, verse 27, and find him though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. He's talking about this God that they ignorantly worship. They didn't know him, but he wanted them to know him. People need to know the Lord. Your family, my family needs to know the Lord. And our lives have an impact on whether they're going to live for God or not. You say, preacher, I don't, I can't make anybody. No, you can't make people go to church. You can't make people live for God. But you can influence them in the right way. Amen. Yeah, listen, I, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. But I want my life to influence people to church, to come to church, to get in there and to live for God and to have a good time doing it. Amen. I'm glad that we can. Verse 28, he said, For in him we live and move and have our being. Now certain also of your own poets have said, For we also are his offspring. We're the creation of God. Amen. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought to think, ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by man's device. We ought not think that way. People ought not think that way. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at. He said, that's ignorance. He said, all that is idol worship is ignorance. It is. Why do people worship idols today? Ignorance. Ignorance. At the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth, and we'll close with this verse, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. To repent. Repentance is still in the Bible. Men, women, boys and girls that are lost and done without God. Preacher, what do they need to do? They need to repent of their sins, turn from those sins and turn to God and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to save them and thank God he can. Listen, I I can't, I can't change my message just cause folks don't do right. Amen, I, I can't. I've got to keep on preaching the word of God. I've got to keep preaching truth, amen. I've got to keep encouraging folks. To get in there and serve God, amen. Live for God, amen. Why? Because we love him. We're saved because we love him, amen. That's the greatest motivation. The love of Christ, Paul said, for the love of Christ constraineth us, amen. It, it, it causes us to want to do for God the love of Christ. The more we love him, the more we'll want to do for him, amen. Well, time's gone. I've got to close. Thank you so much for viewing this evening. Whatever it is you're viewing, thank you so much. I hope it's been a help to you, an encouragement to you. Don't forget our Sunday morning services we put on YouTube, a little short 10 minutes with the pastor we call it on Sunday mornings. If you're not viewing that, I'd encourage you to do that. Thank those of you that have subscribed to our YouTube channel. Thank those of you that have hit that thumbs up button. Thank those of you that share these videos. Help us get the gospel out. Thank you so much for that. Hope you have a great evening or whenever you're viewing. Hope you have a great day. And until next time, God bless you is my prayer.